morning. <laughs> so today we'd like to talk about desire. And to start that off, Anna's going to read a prayer for us all just to mm -hmm. settle on in. Yeah, which was perfect. It was just sent by Jesus so you can settle in and relax. You are my goal, my Father, only you. Where would I go but heaven? What could be a substitute for happiness? What gift could I prefer before the peace of God? What treasure would I seek and find and keep that can compare with my identity? And would I rather live with fear than love? You are my goal, my Father. What but you could I desire to have? What way but that which leads to you could I desire to walk? And what except the memory of you could signify to me the end of dreams and futile substitutions for the truth? You are my only goal. Your son will be as you created him. What way but this could I expect to recognize myself and be at one with my identity? Yes, this topic came about <clears throat> from the uh, Holy Instant Retreat. Um, if you weren't there, it was about the Holy Instant. Yes, it was really beautiful. But there was something in the first talk that really spoke to our hearts. Yeah, it was. I recommend watching the or listening to the um, first. It's called the opening session of the Holy Instant Retreat, if you weren't there. Because for me, it, um, I felt this very strong desire for the truth. And it was like something was pulling me in that direction. It was effortless. And um, that stayed with me for quite some time. So it was like a relief, like, OK, my desire is in, is in the right direction, even though it doesn't feel like that all of the time. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, was, it was very comforting to actually feel that um, again. And it felt very, very strong. And so over the week, I thought, I, I went to Anna and said, hey, why don't we talk about desire? Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. This really leads on from, um, fr from the retreat. So with all of the shows, we just like really put our mind into that direction. Okay, so what, what does this even mean, desire? What am, I, what am I desiring that's not of God? And so I started going into this um, more and more. And the more and more I could actually see that there was a lot of stuff down there, which I felt embarrassed to share as well, actually, funny enough. So it was kind of good. Um, so there was like... There was a strong desire to be a person. I was like, wow. That, it was like it was coming up. I was like, so what do I desire? First of all, I was going through things. I thought, well, I've pretty much done everything in this, in this life. Like the things that we seemingly think of pleasure. So nothing really satisfies me in that way anymore. So I thought, okay, well, that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure my desires are pretty low for the world. So as I was going through that, then it was like, no, you desire to be a person. And I was like, ouch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I still desire to be a person. I was like, okay. So what does that mean then? And I just didn't even see that. You know, it's like you can go over the top of it. I'm not a body, I am free. But yet there's these desires there. Like, oh, I desire to be a body. I desire to have food that's going to fulfill this body. And certain foods I like and certain foods I don't like, and that's the stuff that I desire, and that's the stuff I don't desire. 
And it's like, okay, so that's maintaining this body. <laughs> um, and then the other thing was a person. I was like, okay, a person. Well, I've let go of jobs, things like that. So what, what, do I, what, what do I want? What do I want to be a person for? He's like, oh, yeah, you, you, want, to be, you want to be a person. I was like, okay. And it felt really painful. Well, what type of person? Oh, well, you, you could teach the Course in Miracles. And it was just like, oh, my God, this just pain came over me. It's like, it's like trying to go back into the world somehow. There's just like always this little inroad of like, no, no, the world will sustain you. There are good desires here. And it's like, it just feels very, very painful to think that you're going to get anything from this world. And it was like, wow, I didn't realise all that was there. So there was kind of like some shame in, in even feeling that. Mm. Um, what other yeah. ones did I have? Oh, yeah, and then it was like, so, so why do you want to be a person then? Oh, to gain respect, um, to be liked. Um, and what would that bring? Well, that, well, that, would, make, that would make me happy. Um, yeah, and then like underneath that is like this selfishness, like like desire to be liked. Mm. Yeah, me as a as a as a person, and mm. it's like okay, so why is that? Because really, the self concept that I have is is self hatred, and so it's like if I can get other people to like me, then that will bolster the mask of my face. Uh, you know, a a a. a, a um, a false, a false sense of self. So it's like I could see all these desires are just like wrapped up in trying to maintain this this identity, and it just felt very, very painful. And it still does a bit as it's as as, as I'm as I'm talking about it. Mm. I don't know whether you want to share some yeah. of your yeah. desires. Yeah, yeah, I could share that. For me, it was really getting very honest too, like what other things are like my goals. It's like, oh yeah, I have the peace of God as my goal, but I could see that there's like also like a plan B or another thing. Oh, I would love to be an artist or I would love to do this or I would love to travel more and all these different things. And oh, I also said, oh, I actually would like to get married. I told you that. And yeah, all these different goals. I was just watching like, wow, there's a lot of things that I feel like I need, that my mind is just going there. like. And it was very helpful that I could see them because when I was watching them, why, uh, for example, like, why do I feel like I want to get married? Like, Oh, that's a desire for being loved. I want to be loved. I want to feel loved and I want to feel like it's a love that never ends. And then I was like, wow, that's just like the fairy, fairy tale trick that I've been growing up with. It's just like, it's just that. But I could see that inside of me, I want that deeper thing. It's like a love that never ends. And of course, I can ask for that. Of course I can ask for that. That's my birthright. That's that I can ask. But it was really beautiful even with the desire of being an artist. I could see that these skills I have never actually given over to the Holy Spirit. So it was like my thing, okay, I can keep this goal for me in case this other goal doesn't work, that's going to be my plan B. But I can keep it for myself if, if this God thing doesn't work. <laughs> God, that's just being very honest. But I could see that, really see that. And then, but I was feeling a lot of pain with it. And there just came a moment when I just thought, wow, I can't believe I haven't given him these skills for him to use. So when I actually felt like I gave him that, like, okay, I give this over to you, I had tears of gratitude, like I couldn't believe I haven't done that before. It was like this separate thing that I wanted to keep and to hide. 
but yeah like this huge sense of relief came like you can you can trust me I'm taking care of you I'll use everything that you believe you still want and yeah it was just very deep watching like how many desires are through every little thing that upsets me that's always underneath And I guess I would like to, to read one little part of the Song of Prayer, which is on the um, f number one. <laughs> because this was really helpful for me to see that every desire that I have is actually, desire is a prayer. So this says, It is not easy to realize that prayer for things, for status, for human love, for external gifts of any kind are always made up to set up jailers and to hide from guilt. These things are used for goals that substitute for God and therefore disturb the purpose of prayer. The desire for them is the prayer. One need not ask explicitly. The goal of God is lost in the quest for lesser goals of any kind, and prayer becomes request for enemies. The power of prayer can be quite clearly recognized even in this. No one who wants an enemy will fail to find one but just as surely will he lose the only true goal that is given him. Think of the cost and understand it well. All other goals are at the cost of God. That just feels very deep. So during this practice of looking at desires, um, one morning I was um, sitting there just meditating. And so I asked, okay, so is there something practical then to help with lining up my mind um, with, with the truth? like? something that could like I could I could focus on all the time that's going to help me to come back oh yeah that's 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 very simple okay. oh excellent this is good nice and simple yes I like that you already know it okay that's good okay great so what I'd like you to do is I'd just like you to to imagine that that is your desire right now that this is your desire to know how to line up with the truth. And it's something that you're really going to know already, but see if you can take it in in a really new way and see what happens for you. So here's Jesus' answer to, and he called it the prayer of desire. And this will line your mind completely up. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal.
Yeah, so if ever you need help in lining up your mind with your desire, there's the prayer. Mm. So now we'd like to show a short video. Yes, we would like to show you a beautiful video that we just saw on YouTube. If please you could set it up, Nicholas, and play it. <laughs> It comes back to the question of desire. Your desire is your prayer. And when you have multiple desires, you have multiple prayers. As long as you have multiple desires, you cannot really claim that you want the peace of God. As long as you want many different things, you cannot really want to know God. Because God is one, God is love, and peace, and joy. And when you want other things, you don't want that one thing. So in the Bible, Jesus said, Let thine eye be single. He was saying, focus your full attention on heaven, on God. And to be aware of the kingdom of heaven, is merely to focus your full attention on it. We all know intuitively that love has no language and that God knows the prayer of our heart before we even speak a word. So language cannot really be a barrier. The ego's use of language could be a barrier because the ego's use of anything is a barrier. But when we give the symbols over to the Holy Spirit, we are shown that there are no problems in listening to the Spirit. It's just when the, the Spirit speaks to us and the ego does not want to hear it or resist hearing it, that's where the problem starts. So in order to have a rapid experience of forgiveness, it takes great willingness to allow the miracle to come through your awareness. Because everything is arranged for you. It's almost like it is all completely involuntary and you don't have to worry what to say or do or where to go. You know that everything will be perfectly provided so you don't spend your mind energy trying to figure out the world. And in the end, it will become so natural to have time and space arranged. It will feel like a fairy tale. So we wanted to do an exercise for everyone. Yeah, with this video it was like very clear. Okay, we need to just see what we desire, what we want. And we just want to invite you into this experience with us as we're doing this mm -hmm. <laughs> together. Can you guide us through a little meditation right now, an exercise? So if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and just get comfortable and relaxed and just open your mind up to all possibilities and all healing and let him work through you. And our first question is, what are your desires above the peace of God? What do you desire more than the peace of God?
and then thinking about this desire, what do you think it will give you? What will you get out of this desire? And now if you wish, you can give all your desires over. You can let go of this completely and have it retranslated. It never is the idol that you want, but what you think it offers you, you want indeed and have the right to ask for. Nor could it be possible it be denied. Your will to be complete is but God's will, and this is given you by being His. God knows not form. He cannot answer you in terms that have no meaning. And your will could not be satisfied with empty forms made but to fill a gap that is not there. It is not this you want. Creation gives no separation, no separate person and no separate thing the power to complete the Son of God. You have sought first the kingdom of heaven and all else has indeed been given you. The secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. To ask for the specific is much the same as to look on sin and then forgive it. Also, in the same way, in prayer, you overlook your specific needs as you see them and let them go into God's hands. There, they become your gifts to Him, for they tell Him that you will have no gods before Him no love but His. What could His answer be but your remembrance of Him? Can this be traded for a bit of trifling advice about a problem of an instant's duration? God answers only for eternity. But still, all little answers are contained in this. To you, who are in time a little while, Prayer takes the form that best will suit your need. You have but one. What God created one must recognize its oneness and rejoice that while illusions seem to separate is one forever in the mind of God. Prayer now must be the means by which God's Son leaves separate goals and separate interests by. 
and turns in holy gladness to the truth of union in his Father and himself. Lay down your dreams, you holy Son of God, and rising up as God created you, dispense with idols and remember Him. Prayer will sustain you now and bless you as you lift your heart to Him in rising song that reaches higher and then higher still until both high and low have disappeared. Faith in our goal will grow and hold you up as you ascend the shining stairway to the lawns of heaven and the gate of peace. For this is prayer and here salvation is. This is the way it is God's gift to you. so grateful for this and I'm so happy that I get to share the gifts that came for me during this show preparing for the show the gift of giving mm -hmm. our desires over mm -hmm. it's a relief it's a relief yeah I like that line I'm, I'm retranslating it. We grow in faith together. It's like I don't have to get it right in this moment. I'm just growing in that faith to line my desire up rather than, oh my God, my desire's on something else. It's yeah. like, no, I'm growing in faith for my desire to line up with the truth. That's what I can do. Yeah. Don't feel like you, have, you haven't got other desires. Just be true about it. Release them. And we'll share in this peace together. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so good to be with you all. Oh, yeah. So grateful. Mm. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>